Hi guys, it's Vace here from RecordingStudio9.com. Today I'll be talking about and presenting you and showing you a VST plugin called Pipeline, which is part of Presonus Studio One Do uh, Professional uh, version. And you basically you can use this Pipeline VST plugin as a virtual insert for your each of your tracks. What I mean by insert is similar to the hardware insert. That means you'll be able to bypass uh, or, or have a true signal that goes out to an artboard unit, which could be a compressor, an equalizer, or it could be a, a reverb delay or any other effects, which is you know a hardware effect unit, uh, artboard unit, and then process that and feed it back into the track. And so I will show you how you'll be able to manage that with Pipeline. Now, one usually will use a, a pre-amplifier pre like the studio channel that I have, which has compressor and equalizer and tube, uh, while you're actually recording. So you plug your microphone into it, and then you use the output to record your track. But what I have done is I actually just use direct microphone connection to my Presonus Audiobox 1818 VSL, and recorded it flat with no effects, no, uh, no options, just straight from the microphone. Because that allows me to be able to adjust and play around with whatever effects that I want. So if I want to apply a different effects later on, uh, and if I had already recorded with the compressor settings and equalization settings, I'm stuck with it. But this way, using the Vi Pipeline VST plugin, I can actually alter any of those effects later on to my heart's content. And that's the best thing about it. Now, to be able to get the signal out from your DO, Presonus Studio One Professional, into the outboard unit, you need a physical output. And so that means you need an audio interface which has uh, individual outputs. The demonstration that I'm going to do is with my Presonus AudioBox 1818 VSL, which has eight outputs, eight inputs and eight outputs. So I'm going to use one of those outputs and then one of the inputs to process my effects uh, device, which is the Presonus Studio Channel Tube Preamplifier. I'm going to utilize my uh, preamplifier by using the compressor and the paramatic equalizer, as well as the tube effect that it comes with into my vocal track. I will demonstrate to you with my Presonus AudioBox 1818 VSL as my audio interface uh, and my studio channel tube preamplifier as my effects unit. But if you have a different audio interface and you want to use a different effects processing, that is all fine. The concept is all the same. As long as your audio interface supports one or two output, if you're processing mono or stereo signal, and then one or two channels coming in if you are processing a stereo signal. Let's say if you want to add a stereo reverb uh, processing that you have. So you need at least two inputs coming back in. So once you've got all that ready and set up, then it's way to go. So let's have a look, a quick uh, graph of what the connections look like. Now I have my uh, audio box at the top and my studio channel at the bottom. So I'm using channel three output from my audio box, feeding into the input of the studio channel, tube preamp, and the output of the tube preamp going into input three of my audio box 1818 VSL. Um, the reason I have chosen uh, TRS connection, balanced line level signals, rather than uh, microphone level signals, even though it's a microphone preamplifier, um, because the output from my audio box is line level, so I'm feeding in line level into my um, uh, studio channel to your preamplifier. And then, the, and vice versa, I could have used uh, an XLR to output to a microphone input, but I preferred line level output um, coming out from my studio uh, channel into my audio box channel tree. And using channel tree for both input and output, it just makes it easier to know that every time, whatever I output uh, my, uh, any signal to channel tree from 
or Apple tree on my audio box, I know it's actually going to my app audio. To demonstrate a pipeline, which is in Personas Studio One Professional DO that I use, um, I will use my latest song in progress. And I hope you're not going to mind listening to my test recording of my voice. This uh, um, sort of, uh, my vocals were recorded late night just to give me a guide into, uh, into the song so I know I, which uh, arrangements to make and what instruments to play and so on. I guess it's, it should be okay uh, to experiment with. Let's have a quick uh, listen. Okay, so that's the song and the vocals we're going to work on. So we're going to add a uh, pipeline VST plugin to have insert in and out into my uh, studio channel to preamplifier and I'll be able to apply the compressor setting that I love and the parametric equalizer setting that I love as well as a little bit of tube warmness into my vocals. Even though this is a test uh, recording of my vocal, it most likely be deleted straight after this demonstration. Um, but nevertheless, I'll show you how it's all done. It's very, very easy. Um, now what we need to do is add pipeline right there. Now it is says mono because it's a mono track for my vocals. And this is what it looks like. It has an input, uh, well, output and input setting. So the send is, you can adjust the amount of signal that needs to go to the out, uh, to the output of my audio box, uh, channel 3, as I uh, demonstrated. And it will come back from the input tree um, as the return. And we can adjust that input um, as well uh, so for, for that. Now I've got all of the settings uh, on my Sonos uh, ready. Now to be able to find out what channel to send it to, it's in the in in Studio One. It's very very easy and very versatile. It actually not limited to what track it's recorded, so it you can assign it to anyone. And at the moment I have Pipeline Three out there. And to be able to set it up, I'll show you how it's all done. It's quite easy. I can easily go into Audio I/O Setup, and then select the outputs, and there it is. There. At the moment I have only uh, set up uh, left and right outputs as my main output going out as the main bus, and I also have called uh, you know I named it Pipeline Three, that actually uses the output three of my Presonus audio box um, that it goes out. You can easily add more outputs if you like, if you've got multiple um, outboard units. So you can apply m multiple um, inserts into it. But at this example, I'm only going to use one. I usually only use one. So that's the output that we are sending the signal out to. And then we'll be able to just select that. And then a return coming back, I have plugged in my TRS patch connection into my input tree, so I can easily select input tree for it. And it's done. That's it. That's all you really need to do as, as far as um, you know, adjustments are concerned. So I'm just going to turn the volume up now into Unity of my uh, studio channel uh, to preamplifier, and I will slowly adjust the input signal uh, into the tube preamplifier until it, I've got enough uh, nice clean signal and I'll be able to see it here as well as we play it. Now one thing I should also mention there are obviously going to be some latency between the signal coming out of your uh, DAW which is Presonus Studio 1 into your audio box or audio interface and then coming out of your audio interface into your FX processor and then being processed coming out of your FX processor um, or outboard gear back into your audio interface and back into the you know, recording door, Presonus Studio One. And in my system, it has actually estimated that it's going to be 24 milliseconds of delay for it. But as far as um, 
compressors, EQs, um, even sometimes reverbs, that should be fine. That should not have much effect to it. The only time is when you may need to take care of latency is when you are using app or delay units. And you can do that by using this offset unit. So if I put my mouse, it says delay compensation. So you can use this to adjust the delay the, or the time that it takes uh, for the things to be go out and come back in. So you can offset that timing so that it's always in time. But in, in most cases, if you're just using compressors and parametric equalizers um, and even reverb, it doesn't have that much of an effect. But you can always play around with it and, 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 and work it out. Okay, let's have a quick listen and see uh, what the signal comes uh, through there. <laughs> Okay, that's my volumes. I'm just adjusting the levels now. Okay, that sounds about right. All the levels, uh, the levels coming in and levels going out are pretty much the same uh, level. And you can always adjust it, obviously, um, uh, to what you want. But the main thing is to make sure that um, the signal that's being sent out is not overloading your, um, your effects unit and audio interface and so on. So it uh, sounds all good. Now, uh, as I play... I will actually um, bring in the compressor, I'll turn the compressor on, and then later on I'll bring the equalization on and we'll be able to hear the difference. And you may notice that I have not used any VST plugs in on my uh, vocal channel, so or the only thing there is there is pipeline, so there's no VST plug in. Let's bring the compressor on. And then back off again. And then turn it back on. Let's turn on the parametric equalizer. Okay. So uh, that's, uh, that's about um, what I would be using. So I'm, you can hear the compressor come on and the parametric equalizer come on. It made uh, you know, quite a difference. And I can always keep listening and then play around with it and adjust it to my heart content. And if I need to go a bit more sort of distor tube distortion, I can add that to it as well. But the setting, I've got the tube at about 40%. Um, or there about, I think it's 35%. Um, so it gives a nice warm feeling to, to my very tired and crappy voice. <laughs> now the next thing uh, I usually want to add to my vocals is um, some demuthing. Uh, that's what I would call it. You know, so it's uh, d d remove the muddiness out of it. And I, uh, from my ex experience, I have it about... Um, about there, 150 hertz, and then I use about uh, for my vocals and the microphone that I'm using. I know it by heart. About 400 hertz, I usually drop by about um, four, four, four and a half dB to get just rid of that little bit of muddiness in that area. And um, if I play it, and I need to put that before the pipeline, so get rid of all of that. Let's have a listen. Okay. 
Bye bye. Okay, so that uh, fix up uh, some of the muddiness. Let's give it some uh, effects. Um, that's my uh, bus reverb that I can add, and I usually add a little bit of um, um, a bit delay. And there uh, at, at quarter, uh, that's a bit too much. Probably about fifteen percent there, with high cutoff. Um, about 4K and low cut off about 200. Um, give it nice stereo effect. Feedback definitely not that high. Again, about 15%. Um, and let's have a quick listen to what it sounds like now. <laughs> Acherit met Shovetsane Lurki Sherva Anush Hove Punzamer Pai Paye. Well, that made a uh, quite a bit of different difference, didn't it? Even though uh, my creepy voice uh, is still there, but that gives me a little bit of uh, more uh, listening pleasure as I keep repeatedly listening to it. So let's have a listen to uh, with, with a little bit of music as our output. So that's pipeline, and this is what it looks like, and hopefully that is uh, helpful enough for you. gives me you gives you more um, external create create what's the word i'm trying to find the right word uh create creation external creation ideas and and so on <laughs> so let's have a listen and uh, we'll, we'll come out of here <laughs> Well, now you know all about Pipeline and all of the good things that uh, it does. It actually gives you, I guess, an extra level of creativity so you can use any other effects, outboard gears, um, you know, give that more, I guess, the analog feeling into it, You'll be able to fiddle with knobs and things to, um, to get the best out of your, you know, music creation. And um, if you have any other questions you'd like to ask about Pipeline, I'm more than happy to answer them for you. If I don't know it, I'll try to experiment with it and work out a way for you. Um, and um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, you're most welcome to do so. That way you're always uh, kept up to date. And you can also visit uh, my website, recordingstudio9.com. There's heaps of information there as well. And until next time, thanks for watching and enjoy music and cheerio.